What's Year up, was Petty's Elite the List podcast. Tune in for another week. Y'all know how we do. Of course, we have a full house because we can't help it. <laughs> you can't help it. This is how it goes down every week. Um, I want my artists to introduce themselves. We have three different artists in here tonight. You know what I'm saying? Doing their things in their own right. And I'm going to have to introduce themselves right now, starting with you. Well, I named Jigga, a.k.a. Young Jigga. What you do? Yeah, like, uh, brag about you yourself do. a little bit. Right, right. This is what you here for. Nah, I'm an artist. I rap. I big music. Right. Hey, hey, dope. Yo, this small Q, you know, a.k.a. Mr. Young Chick, Old Chick. Um, I shoot videos, and yeah, I rap, and I finesse. Hey. hey. Yes, yes, it's your boy, Rich P, Harlem, New York. Uh, artist, songwriter, designer, performer. Yeah, man, we do it all out here. Love is love. Salute. Hey, hey dope, dope, dope. Wait, so on our way here, we were like, well, pretty much, <laughs> <laughs> we are coming from um, Tweep. Tweedle, oh Tweedle. my gosh, she's so Tweedle. bad. Tweedle, <laughs> Tweedle. T-W-E-E-D-L. It's a black-owned app now. Um, I forgot the man's name, but he started this app to encourage new up-and-coming artists to have almost like a Pandora. Mm. So it um, shuffles through different playlists of new up-and-coming artists, and it's supposed to be a helpful way to get like more streams to artists that are coming out and don't get the proper exposure, which I think is dope, especially come from black men, so kudos to him. Yes. Um, what do you guys think about uh, an app like that for you guys all trying you know, be more mainstream you know, and get that radio play like you want? Yeah. Nah, that's fire. <laughs> <laughs> or, all right, so what do, you, right. what do you feel like the streaming websites that we have right now right. is lacking? Right, right, right. Um, they lacking probably more, like, more operation, like, more working on to, like, keep on letting artists get out there. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Because a lot of people is not, a lot of underground artists is not really getting out of there, being known. A lot of trash people coming out. I'm not even going to lie. Dirt. Mm-hmm. Facts. So you feel like there should be a better vetting process? Yeah. Right. Okay. What do you want you? Well, I don't, I don't use none of them stream joints. I'm, I'm a YouTube really? nigga. Oh, Why not? I'm, I'm a YouTube nigga. Okay. I, 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 just, I just don't want to pay them niggas, like, honestly. <laughs> you know, they, yeah, did, I, they did mention, though, YouTube being maybe the big one of the biggest, like, streaming as far as, like, being able to get those hits. Yeah, all, I watch all my music on YouTube. I, I throw all my music on YouTube and um and Instagram, a little bit on SoundCloud. But I'm hearing, like, those streaming platforms give you data, like, as to where your fans is at. So you could pull up out there and do a show. So that sounds dope. But right. I don't know much more about it. You could use Instagram for that, too, though. Right. At this point, if you have, like, a business page, turn your page to a business page, get right. your analytics, it'll tell you where you're popping, what day, what time. Mm-hmm. But a lot of people don't even use that. Because mm-hmm. to me, somebody like Frank Nizza, I don't know if y'all know him yet, but right. he markets off of that. He'll see where his music is booming, and he'll fly there and do a show. Mm-hmm. And that's something that artists, I feel like, used to do and don't do no more. Like. Mm-hmm. Touring, you don't you don't have to do much to tour, really. You just have to know you have a sound out there. You have to That's one person. Families. It was somebody told me like they were on like a, a cruise or something like that. They was they were out in like DR or something, and they were they were in like a bus or whatever the case. And they they had one person listen to their song, then they left. And then the person hit them on like Instagram and was like, "Yo, I put I put mad people onto your song now. Your shit is booming in DR. Sometimes I just take that. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So don't be afraid of analytics." Mm-hmm. That's thing. that's true. Um, I think the only thing they really lack in is reaching out more. Right. Um, I think we kind of have to go to them to really fight to be heard. But um, I I use streaming platforms. The only difference I would say with the analytics with Instagram is you don't know what people are following you for. Mm. Right. So if I'm looking at my streams online on every, every platform, I know that they're there to listen to my music. Right. Some people follow you on the gram just to see what you wear, um, to see what girl you talk to, right. to see if you're going to post something funny today. Mm-hmm. So the biggest question with social media that leaves a big question mark is, what do they follow you for? Um, so I think with the music, at least you know what it is directly. They're strictly there to listen to you. The mm-hmm. stream came because they press play and they want to listen to you. So that person is more important than an Instagram follower. Someone who's mm-hmm. subscribing to your music as to following you, because anyone could follow you. And I think to read to elaborate on what you said, um, 
the problem is like you just said how easy it is to tour it's super easy mm -hmm. but you're dealing with an internet era where you know people call themselves an artist but live behind a phone and computer right. it's not a real artist you just have access to a studio because a studio now is if just even. a computer and a microphone it ain't like going to a studio back in the day where it mattered and you was paying 200 an hour you know that weeded out the people who wanted to do it for fun but now music is like anyone can do it and call it music right so a lot of people that call themselves artists are scared to perform they ain't mm -hmm. trying to do no shows so they'll rather just keep playing the lotto putting a song out there till it goes viral but you know it's probably like what 70 million people that do music in this country right how many go viral a year five so you got yeah. a five and 70 million chance of like getting on with no investing Right. So, I'd rather invest in myself and rather than play lotto because that's really what everyone's doing right now. I hope a song goes viral without me paying a dime. So, mm -hmm. so is it? It's easier for you to kind of go to the heads and like probably pay the stations and get try to get those spins versus. Well, you talking about yeah. some payola girl? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm asking though. Is it easier well, for you to do that? Absolutely, investing in yourself is the key to anything. Mm -hmm. You got like, for instance. Look at Rockstar Games. They got Red Dead Redemption. They got a $750,000 billboard on Melrose Avenue in L.A. Mm -hmm. This is a billion-dollar company still investing in themselves to make sure when you drive by the highway at night, oh, shit, I got to pick up Red Dead Redemption at night or tomorrow when I go. But you won't put $200 into your little marketing campaign for your song. So speaks volumes on why people are winning and why some aren't. You got to put in money into yourself before you want someone else to do because – the only way you're going to make it in anything is if you invest in yourself. Mm -hmm. 100%. So, I mean, right now we got a bunch of underground artists that won't get picked up for whatever reason it is. But, again, they're still getting no streams off of YouTube or anything like that. Do you find it easier for you guys to, like, use your social media platforms versus trying to go the route of paying somebody? You you got to pay. Like, that's that's just part of it. Mm -hmm. yeah, you got you got to work and you you got to pay for promotion like that's that's the reality like if you're not doing that i don't see how you're going to get on but that's just a part of it like every record label every artist thing i'm like yeah you gotta put money into this shit you know what i'm saying so it is what it is Facts. so what do you have what do y'all feel about like the way a Nipsey or like a Hollywood play where they was pushing like actual right. concrete CDs as opposed to focusing on streams. You feel like there's more respect in doing that? And like, is there still a lane for people to do yeah. stuff like that and pop? Yo, my, my head be spinning with this shit because it's like, <laughs> <laughs> like I'll be, I be selling. I got like these USBs I sell. It's like a wristband and mm -hmm. it's a USB in it and I, I sell that. But you know, I... I seen niggas selling vinyls. I see Yo. people still moving the CDs. Some people trying to bring back cassette tapes. Like the the shit just all over the. Place. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 don't, I don't even really know what to say. Like I met I met a dude. Like he he was like, "Yo, your music fire!" Like I'm like, "Where you listen to music?" He was like, "The radio." <laughs> I was like, "You don't you don't do streaming, YouTube, nothing, Instagram." He like, "Nah." I'm like, "So how you find music?" He was like. I just I hear it or I don't, right. and you know what I mean. It's like how do you get those niggas like guerrilla right. marketing? Right, because that's what they were yeah. talking about too at the panel. That radio is not going to go anywhere simply because it's such a key factor Facts. that there are some people that only listen to radio. Oh. So for those listeners, how do you feel like you can reach out to them? How do you reel them it's, in? It's all ground up, like mm -hmm. like what he was saying. Like how do you reach those people? Mm -hmm. I think artists just want to do it one way there are multiple ways of hustling and it's like how hard are you gonna work nipsey ain't just do cds merch cds um online everything so i did physical copies of my album last year when i dropped it and it was ten dollars i said if you cash at me i was like i can't sign a stream but you i can sign an actual cd so to everybody that like me outside of new york or in new york if you want to meet me to cash up ten dollars i'll link you and i sold out Immediately, wow. I had to re-up twice on physical nice. albums. And mm -hmm. I did a, you know, inside art, disc art, everywhere. I did an actual album, barcoded and everything. Because what people in the digital era is forgetting that people like feeling like they got something for their money. You buy my album online, you don't get no pictures. You just get the link in the songs. 
it downloads yeah you get the album but music is a low hanging fruit now because everyone can do it so being that it's everyone can do it you have to separate yourself mm -hmm. if I do a physical album I sign that you get a business card mailed to you on top of that saying thank you when you it's not even about you putting it in the player no it's like yo I got an experience mm-hmm I got an experience for this. Like, when I do shows, usually when I do shows, I, I give free shirts out. I give out merch. Like, all we do is take from our consumers. Like, artists, right. some of us ain't even good. I'm not me. <laughs> I'm really good at what I do. But some artists ain't good. Yeah. And you constantly asking people to spend money on you. Yeah, right. So you like, yo, come to my show. Come to my show. Buy my music. Mm -hmm. Buy this. Buy that. And you regular. You're yeah. mediocre at what you do. What are you giving back to the people that constantly are supporting you? Yeah, Nothing. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Me, I'll, I'll spend a buck fifty buy a dozen shirts and throw twelve shirts in the crowd. Mm -hmm. Cause guess what? When they go home, yo, I don't know who that was tonight, but son threw me a T. Mm -hmm. And one thing fact. everyone that wears is a shirt. <laughs> and then guess what? Some Every of those <laughs> some of those people hit me up to this day. I'll never forget that. And they mm -hmm. buy my music because I'm giving them something they never got before. And then I treat you know, I'm giving them the experience that they getting at a regular concert or someone yeah, that signs. So it's true. you gotta separate yourself and create an experience for people because if you just doing what everyone else do, it gets tired. Mm -hmm. Like, all right, boom. How many shows I'm gonna go to? Mm -hmm. But right. when it's fun and when you doing your thing, they like, you know what, I wanna go back. Son really be putting on, so right. I like going to these shows. Mm -hmm. Some people going out of just you just do this so you don't call me a hater. Right, right. <laughs> and you got to really be looking in the mirror at times and say, am I really doing what I need to do as an artist? So mm -hmm. do I do everything. I mean, I'm if I got to do that, 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 that all at once, I'm going to do it. Because at the end of the day, it's like, what are you waiting for, a manager to come along? What is the manager going to do that Yo. you can't? I so definitely have yeah. a question to that, but I wanted to know, like, besides what he's saying, what do you guys feel like you offer that's, what that's different ask, from yeah. other artists, like, in terms What's of your performances? What's you guys can give in your music or performance? Yeah. I'll probably give out just, they, my fans fuck me OD, like, it's just my sense of humor, like, they fuck <laughs> me OD. Just being around me is, like, lit. Mm -hmm. around me <laughs> laughing all day, like, they know that. Laughing all You're not even like, doing right. shit and I'm laughing. I don't know why I'm laughing. <laughs> he so look mad really? tired right now and I'm weak. <laughs> so you bring your personality to the stage though yeah, every time you have a fact. show? Definitely. Yeah. Definitely, all the time. So what you feel like you are for the people? The people Me, that... I'm, I'm a regular nigga. Like, I just... I don't know. Niggas seem to love my work ethic and, mm -hmm. and like, I be trying all types of different shit and, and like, I guess the... The, the shit that, that really hit for me is, like, my joint called Young Chick, Old Chick. Like, some people think it's funny. Mm -hmm. Older women be trying to talk to niggas. Like, you know what I mean? Like, so, <laughs> Wait, so you got to tell us what the song is right. about? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's oh, you had a cougar on your heels? Uh -huh. <laughs> nah, back in the day, I was just talking to, like, a younger chick and an older chick at the same time. <laughs> All right. Uh, you know, I just I just wrote like one bar and then later on I ended up writing out the whole song and it it, it went viral a couple times. So you know, who you stay with, right? <laughs> what, was it, what was it called? Time machine. <laughs> <laughs> oh. who, you say, who you stay with? Who you we want to know. Yeah, neither one. They both was a dub. <laughs> Why they was a dub? He stayed in present time. Yeah. So was there a difference between the young chick and the old chick? Yeah, that, that's, that's, what, that's what inspired the song. It was just funny. Right, so like, tell us. That's what the wanna... song for. Nah, but you know what I mean? <laughs> we here right now. Right. <laughs> so nah, what do you... older chicks offer? <laughs> Nah, the older chick, you know, she she talking about her son and shit. She always was talking about <laughs> my her king, son. my world. Yeah, she she. <laughs> <Whoa. laughs> nah, keep going. Nah, keep going. We listen. <laughs> she was just always talking about her son and like she would get drunk like and call me like in the middle of the night like three thirty four and. And be like, yo, you not ready for this. Like, <laughs> yo, yo, older women get straight to the point. That's why. Yo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They yo. got bills to pay. And, and babies to feed. 
the, the young chick was just some super bum bitch. Like, oh my oh, god, super we bum. Like, there. like Wait. no priorities. Like, like no goals. Like, <laughs> her goal was to like get some bag and like I remember she got the bag and she was just cherishing. I don't mean like the bag, like money. I mean like some Aldo bag, like super, some super, some, some super Aldo. regular bag and like she was just like holding on to it for dear life. Like, Why is he like that? Shit, <laughs> shit is crazy. Like, <laughs> Clutch. <laughs> nah, like, hold on. What's y'all experiences? Y'all like older women, right. younger women? What's up? Like Since now, I want to know. Right. Now I want to know. Um, <laughs> I'm dead. Nah, he Middle like just like Tiana, right? Nah, hey. that's, the, that's the family right there. Um, I just like a chick that got her head together, man. Like you know, head on her shoulders. I think if you just got the wisdom. You could be young and wise. You could be old and immature. That's so I just think um, someone who is, I think you got to be, in t for me to date you, you got to know who you are. Mm. A lot of people out here is lost. Like you, you, you got you to gotta be comfortable in your skin, know what you want out of life, or at least have an idea what you want out of life. And also be an understanding. I don't date anyone without perspective. If you don't got perspective, you got to put yourself in my shoes. Because when you do this career, everything can make you insecure. Facts. You in a video shoot. You got a chick as your leading lady. It's, oh, I know you All was right, fucking, with, fucking with her on set or whatever. So when you date someone who has understanding and um, perspective, you win. Because it's like, I right, you actually know why I'm doing this. Like, come on. Beyonce's done movies with Idris Elba as the love interest. Like, we ain't, you know, Hove can't trip off that. Yeah, he right. the sexiest you know what I'm man saying? I, <laughs> one man, one sound. But, and that's for many actresses or just artists. They have le leading roles of people in the visuals. So mm -hmm. it's like everyone just be insecure, man. And then social media don't help at all. That shit just makes everyone right. even more insecure. That's a like, fact. you don't even know some women sometimes. And if there's a hard eyes under your pits, like, who that? Like, I don't know either. Shit. <laughs> It's like, but it's just it's wicked, man. But if your head is on your shoulder, you gotta be secure with yourself, man. Cause and that's niggas too. Cause man, niggas be more mature and uh, more right. insecure. Than Say women. that. So Tory Lanez actually said not too long ago he wants to date a regular girl, whatever that nah. means. Versus I guess nah. the industry So I'm gonna. I feel like he you. Lincoln Dream Dog, but whatever. <laughs> I'm gonna start with you. Do you feel Shout like as Dream you <laughs> as I you love Dream solidify Dog, right? yourself that's in this industry, you Bye. would rather an industry chick or a girl that's not in the industry? Um, I don't know. I'm not sure. Probably a girl that's not in the industry, though. Nah, you got a girl right now. You lying. <laughs> <laughs> that's why he said, I'm going to go with yeah. Lisa. I'm going to go with the one that's not in the industry because she listening. <laughs> <laughs> she too thin. She too uh, thin. <laughs> nah, girl is definitely not in the industry, though. All right, why, though? Why? Why? Because they're not too involved in all the extra shit. Like, oh, like, what you doing? Da, da, da. Let me go through your phone. Da, da, da. Feel me? So you feel like they more laid back because they yeah. clueless, yeah, like right? <laughs> Nigga, so I need a dumb bitch. That's crazy. That's not too <laughs> industry savvy. Yeah. <laughs> Boy, stop playing. Right. <laughs> nah, I fuck with that though. I I prefer dudes who's not in the mix, honestly, because mm -hmm. I just feel like it's it's a a break. Like you know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. I gotta do this shit all day. This is my life. Gotta put on a I want to be able to have some type of release in somebody like. Mm -hmm. I Alright, cool. I don't have to be silver with this nigga. Like, I could just be Joan. Like, mm -hmm. fuck out of here. That's my real name. Don't use it. Don't use it. Don't use it. <laughs> so on the way here too, we were having a heated debate, and we were talking. About I don't want to <laughs> even talk about this no more because <laughs> we more or less talk about where hip hop originated, and you know they started talking this Jamaica shit. But I want to know from each. <laughs> I want to know from each of you because not for nothing, the times are changing. We're not all from the era of KRS One. We're not all from the era of a Jay Z. And, and why we acting like African men bother? Like right, like we, we don't have not, no we in the Zulu all nation and have from no. Rockin'. We're all no influence of none of that. <laughs> Niggas just say, cool, Herc. Okay. <laughs> we all have moved Can't on and we have our own nostalgia. So there was so one I founder now because that's not how I grew up learning. Like, I didn't know there was one founder. <laughs> cool I Herc. thought it was multiple founders. Cool. Like, but I want to know from each of you guys, though, like, what's your nostalgia in hip hop? Like, where, yeah. where's that place that you started? You when did you influence? fall in love with hip hop? When did you fall in love with hip hop? <laughs> brown, brown sugar, sugar shit. shit. Sorry. Sorry. Exactly. <laughs> So I'm gonna start with you, Rich I'm a I'm a fucking encyclopedia. Like I know when every album came out, what it sold. I study it too much. Like I was born in a hip hop. 
Which part? What at what point though? Um, like the nostalgia of it, like y'all were with the, when like ice cream trucks era. was out here, just telling <laughs> like that. where what yep, what part of it? That you, <laughs> Biggie, right, Pac, okay, and then yeah, like DMX, Mace. Mm -hmm. Like I, my parents is young, so I grew like I literally was born into hip hop. That's right. what they was listening to. So um, once I heard like affirmative action by Nas, I just started. I was like a little ass kid writing rhymes in my book, mm. and. I just knew from when I was a kid I wanted to be a rapper. Like, I, I never wanted another occupation. Mm -mm. So, I was born into So, it. you never worked at McDonald's? No, I ain't never worked at McDonald's, but <laughs> I have, I've had numerous jobs, of course. Um, hell yeah. If somebody, how do you see? This is another thing that we gotta talk about in hip hop. You gotta talk and, about it. The fucking problem is everybody wanna look like they on before they make it. Fact. And then that's, when that's everybody fact, make yeah. it, everybody wanna talk about how hard they had it. Yeah. That's that corny shit. Right. And it's supposed yeah. to be the other way around. Right, right, right. Look like you on when you on. And when you struggle and let people know it's real out here. Right. Exactly. It's, I it's agree. It's corny. Everybody at rap now got a wrafe and niggas sneaking <laughs> a girl into their mother crib. Listen. So it's like, you know. <laughs> Hell yeah, yeah, I work. Yeah. I, it's like everybody like to act like where where the money coming from that you invest in. That's a the fact. Fucking job. Some people, some people got parents. You know what I'm saying? Some people do got yeah, parents. Yeah, exactly. Some people got Tiger. the streets. And yeah, some people got the he street had parents. Yeah. He they and some people weights. and some people come from a good household right. and still get steered wrong. Yeah, that's right. Because right. the thing is, it's like yo, if your parents, if you got both parents in your crib and they both work all day, mm -hmm. yeah. The streets is raising you more because you exactly. seeing them when they come home from work, they tired. Right. So 60, 75 percent of the day is your friends. Mm -hmm. So they have a bigger influence in you than your parents. Mm -hmm. So even with a good household, they be like, I don't know where you went wrong. You don't have the time <laughs> to raise them. That's so fact. guess who's raising them? They friends. They the ones who have a bigger influence than the parents. And TV. So even a good ass home, you come on a flat screen, home cooked meal. I, I, but guess what? That nigga wants to run the streets. Because that's who's talking to them all day. Mm -hmm. That's who's telling them what's right and wrong. So them. It's, it's really crazy how you could really come from a good household and still end up going the wrong way. Right. What was y'all upbringing? Um, <laughs> no, <I> was <laughs> what was y'all upbringing? What brought y'all to hip hop? Right. When did you fall in love? I don't know, man. Like, I, st I started with, like, I was listening to, like, Ninja Turtle rap tapes. That's crazy. What? <laughs> and then, like, <laughs> My homeboys was OD. Hold up. Hold up. Because I was a fan of Ninja Turtles. <laughs> <laughs> they had a rap tape? Nigga said they had an album? They had a rap tape. They album oh, made shit. more than the canon? Right. That's crazy. Oh. I love you, Nick. We love you, Nick. I love, love you, Nick. That's crazy. You know, that's crazy. All, all my friends started cutting mad ass on me. Like, yeah, look, look what this nigga listening to. Were you remixing like, it? Like, what nah, was it? I was just, they just was on some, you know, they got their little cassette tape. They listening to Wu-Tang. And I'm like, yo, I got this. And they just, <laughs> Yo, crazy, never should he be this funny, son. He's not even trying. <laughs> but that's kind of like the anime well, trap that that you you know you've been talking about. Oh, facts, that's facts, facts, out. facts, facts. So uh, there's trap something made May twenty six. It's something to it's, 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 it's lit. It's lit. It's lit. It's lit. <laughs> so pretty much it was like the collision of cartoons and hip hop. I, I guess. Nah, it was niggas cutting that. <laughs> <laughs> And it was kinda niggas like, are you not really into this like, shit and he's like I'm approving <laughs> niggas put me on the Wu-Tang and then I was like alright this shit this shit type fire <laughs> but then not better than they were a little Ninja animated Turtles. too though like they was a little <laughs> animated with their shit not better than that Donatello yeah they, niggas they nice was on though they, yeah they was, facts right. they was on they like kung fu flicks type shit all the old oh, school dude. ninja movies and shit and I was like yo this shit fire I could fuck with it but when I really got into it it was like that that Jada Kiss and Cannabis mm. era with mm. the wordplay, I was like, oh shit, it's deeper than this. Like, yeah, yeah, and that's yeah. when I was like, oh, I fucks with this. Like, you know what I mean? That's kind of what I came up on. Mm. Oh. <laughs> all right, what about you? Was that cartoon was too? Jada. Right <laughs> I came up on all type of music. I used to listen to everything. It was nothing that just was my favorite. Like, you feel me? I listened to Jada Kiss, Nas, all of them. Like, and then I started transfer, like listening to different songs, like. Like different genres? Yeah, different genres, like Bruno Mars type shit. Like, oh, okay. So I listen to shit like that. I'm like, yeah, it's different sounds, you feel me? How does I think he was about to say Andrea Pocelli. I was supposed to be like, me too. <laughs> <laughs> so how do other genres kind of influence what you do as far as a hip hop artist? Hmm. What they do, like, 
Basically. Talk into the mic a little bit, though. Yeah. Oh, my fault. My fault. That's what I was just about to say to him. I'm talking loud enough. <laughs> nah. You not. Nah. You talking like you talking to a blunt. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a smoky right now. Like, so basically, like, they give motivation. Like, cause when I listen to them, like, nah, it's like this different. It's the way the way they create their music is mm. different sounds, and it has to do with how the fans feeling. You feel mm. me? See, yes. Nah, you on to something? Cause yeah, I be telling these niggas to listen to Z100. I swear to God. <laughs> <laughs> y'all missing out son it's other markets and the way they tap into shit is because they make people feel like mm-hmm. not everybody want to stab somebody all the time yeah, like right. shoot them up bang bang or bang, hear like, how rich you are you know like, what i'm like, saying yeah sometimes we want to cry yeah. about fucking yeah. tyrone that cheated on us right on the third, like, <laughs> but my rent was due that day you know what i'm saying like right. sometimes we want to just feel something. That, feel something that's why rap is in such a like music is in such a bad place though yeah because mm-hmm. you can tell all they doing is listening to their peers all they listening right. to is what they like right. in terms of what they're making right. so like to me in my opinion a lot of mumble rappers i think like i can hear that there's no cultural influence or musical influence outside of the other mumble rap that right. they're hearing 100%. and the drug music that they're hearing like you can hear the influence in every other artist's music like quality artists mm-hmm. like you can tell drake don't just listen to rap you know what right. i'm saying you yeah. can tell kanye don't just listen to rap you can tell Tupac ain't just listen to rap. You can tell that when, Lil Wayne ain't just listen to rap. Even though artists that are influenced by Wayne tend to take the the worst part of him. Like, and same thing with Pac. The easy part when of him. Pac, exactly. Right. The, the easy, easy part, part of him. Like yeah. when Pac died, everybody wanted to be a thug. And I'm like, mm-hmm. damn, y'all niggas just skipped the best part right. of Pac. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, everybody just wanted to hit him up, Pac. Nobody <laughs> yeah, wanted their mama. The, poet, yeah. the, the poetic exactly. Pac. And it's just like, yeah, damn. Activist. like, But they always do that. And that's why they become like this terrible version or watered down version of their idol. Mm-hmm. And because they're, t- they're just taking this one part, that's all they know. And it's like, if you listen, like he said, to yeah. other music, you start learning like how to like you said how to feel he, he elaborated on really yeah, that's, that's real talk come on like, check I, my yeah. first when right. i was like when i heard like i i used to literally listen to maroon 5 first album yes. and, no, um, maroon 5 sorry um, adam top Levine? motherfucking 5 sorry daddy. but daddy. Like, i'll be honest i'm not a giant fan of them anymore that's just uh, me I mean, but yeah, their dude. first album to me was like a alternative classic yes. and when I listen to that, that's when I learn like, okay, you can experiment with sounds and shit, mm-hmm. and really like learn songwriting ability mm-hmm. because hip hop is made up of a bunch of different like genres. You know, James Brown is the most sampled artist in hip hop, so yes. you can tell the Talk influence that, that he had on every Not rapper Jamaica. in the eighties. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all, y'all coming down hard on Jamaica. Nah, right y'all right? saying nah, 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 it's just really hard. The whole way, the whole way, the whole way. Listen, I got nothing but love for Cool Hurt. Nah, y'all, y'all ain't go through what we have to go through in the car. It's some Jamaica listen, in the car. Y'all in the way of style. I don't want this Jamaica shit. Jamaica influenced the dressing. Jamaica influenced veganism. I don't want they this. Were in, I don't want this interview haunting me ten years or five years from now. And they like, yo, they was wilding on Cool Hurt. Nah, cool hurt. You and know I what I'm get saying? banned from hip hop. You the man. You the man. <laughs> you the one. You the Shout one. Shout out to right. the, 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 the founder. Cedric <laughs> 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 Ave, what up? <laughs> Just gonna throw Jamaica in there too. I'm so I wanna know then, yeah. guys. <laughs> so like right now we're all in a climate where everyone feels like I feel like it's a sense of responsibility that society is forcing on our um, has you know people that are big in the industry, yeah. yeah. So do you the feel like callers. as you shot callers, right? So you guys feel like as you are big, get, getting bigger in the industry and coming up in the industry, you're gonna feel a certain obligation to speak on things like um, just political mental, campaigns. political campaigns and things like that to like bring more awareness. Because it's as much as we know music to be music, we see how it's in, and even in the shade when we look at the comments, people are looking and expecting mm-hmm. more from your celebrities now. So, what more do you feel like you're gonna be able to bring besides just your ordinary hip hop, just your bops? Like, because right. at the end of the day, the origin was to spread a message. Or do you so even feel like you have a certain obligation, or you just want to make music? I think the platform is... Ne- I mean, I am. I, I do it now. It's like, why wait? Okay. In my opinion. To me, that's what actually catapulted my career is changing the direction of my artistry. Like, once I started speaking on realer topics is when my... I just watched me go from here all the way 
up mm-hmm. here. And I always leave a message at my shows. I try to talk to the crowd. I try to give jewels to everybody because I'm not doing this for me. If I did it for me, I'd rap, record, and just play it in my crib. But I'm doing this actually to be the soundtrack to people's lives. Like, there's always, even if it's like the, the, the song with the, like my single out right now is called Clout. And you know what I'm saying? She just want to fuck me for the clout. Which is a real story, which is true, because a lot of women do know the popularity that I've achieved. A lot of men, too. And, <laughs> like but, a lot of men, too. Y'all niggas the, the first four bars of that song is, life's a balanced business, mm-hmm. pleasure and such, but tonight pour the henny, don't measure the cup. Earlier, I was stressed in the cut, because these niggas is trapping, but won't pay their mom's rent for a month. Mm. So I start the song, this is a commercial-ass song, right. but I just grabbed y'all in, because yeah. everybody, yo, that, I felt that. Yeah. Because right. it's like, yeah. let's be real, all y'all niggas out here selling drugs and popping 10 bottles a week every weekend in the club, like, nigga, that, pay your mom rent for a month for yeah. one. Right, right. Show her, like, yo, even though I'm out here wilding, ma. I'm going to help you off. Mother's Let ain't gonna be lit a, Right <laughs> But <laughs> it's an obligation In my opinion But mm-hmm. a lot of people Are stupid too Like just cause you A famous rapper Don't mean you intelligent Just cause mm-hmm. you A famous right. singer Don't mean You can go viral Could've. overnight You are still ignorant mm-hmm. Like that's why We finding all these dudes Beating on women and shit Like in the mm-hmm. industry Right now Cause they blew up Like that And then boom Oh y'all surprised That these th- They ain't have it All upstairs yeah. But they just happen To go viral So they still stupid so it's like I'm not relying on them to be my voice or be the voice for us but there are some that I feel like alright you smart you sound like you got something right to say how can you only talk about drugs Mm -hmm. that's wild to me like I just think that's beyond me but I think it's an obligation absolutely what about you yo what is the question (laughs) <laughs> my bad do you, feel, <laughs> do you feel a certain obligation to do more than just you know your, your stereotypical raps I mean I don't I don't feel I ever really make regular ass rap mm-hmm. like I don't know what that is anymore cause I be studying the field so much like I see so much like little Nas X like what the fuck is that you see what I'm saying mm-hmm. like that is that country is that country hit with it's whatever like but I guess y'all talking about like mumble rap and like did more so like conscious music. that's like country that mumble actually... rap to you nah nah I'm not saying it's mumble rap but it's like is is that's not Shit, straight. Don't come that old time road. Nah, nah, <laughs> so drink, so you don't you don't like that song? Nah, I listen to that shit joke. every think, day. I, that's I my like it shit. Awesome. It's like that. it's like it's funny. Like yeah, like I don't know. I find certain shit funny. I can't really explain it, but I, I fucks with it. Like I know I mean, exactly what you're talking mm-hmm. about. By yeah. the way, I okay. Like, but what's up? I got horses in the back. That's all I know. Right. <laughs> Will he be here two years from now? We'll find out. But what's so funny? I feel like something like, ironically, I feel like someone like him is is almost necessary for hip hop right now. Being that hip hop seems to be real stagnant. It's either real mumble rap about trash, drugs, and sex and violence, or it's like it gets real conscious where a lot of people aren't listening. So something like Old Town Road, as much as it's like that that jokey kind of song it's it takes away I don't from think the that he was shit. joking though yeah i don't but but he's he's he dibbles and dabbles in a lot of sounds <laughs> yeah. right but i feel like he a song like songs? that yeah he's trying to do like a rock thing <laughs> like he's wonder. just playing with it i'm but dead. i still i feel like it, it's it's at least not with i liked it because it wasn't what i hear all the time it's so cool. if he could mess around and come out with something else like that that actually has a message, I would listen because I you're not just talking about pouring purple in your cup. Like you actually what? gave a sound that wasn't typical. <laughs> like it was cool. why it's why cool I like it is because I feel like it's a, oftentimes when we complain about somebody <laughs> stealing our shit and coming into our categories and why right. can't we reach certain markets, whatever the case it may be. And this nigga dead ass made his well not made history because you were Nelly and know everybody else, though, but but, but yeah, that. like he really made a trap country song and was like nah fuck out of here like I'm really gonna hit number one on the country markets <laughs> and I don't feel like everybody I don't feel like enough artists want to Step dominate outside. everything yeah. like fuck out of here okay cool hip hop okay rap That's what but I when mean. y'all done there and y'all tackled everything y'all gonna feel like damn like alright so what else is there for me to do nigga dominate this whole they, shit like there's no there's no the ceiling for y'all y'all gotta yeah. y'all gotta understand like the sky is the limit so right. if you if you if you wanna stay new and, and true to your shit cool stay true to your shit but how can you elevate that you know I, what I'm I saying? just think he was having fun and he struck you know lightning in the bottle yeah because it came out good mm-hmm. but you know we get one of these every year so i don't think we should be surprised <laughs> you know um Yo. this is a watch me whip watch me nay nay <laughs> oh! um, nah seriously 
Oh, it's not. This nigga took it's my not head off just every now. Every year, every year we get one of these. Oh like, shit! I'm not, so can I ask y'all this? Are y'all anticipating? <laughs> uh-huh. a, no, seriously. And let's be real. Uh-huh. Are we anticipating a little Nas X album? I'm watching. I see what literally am. No, listen, 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 hold on. You want 16 tracks from him? I want 16 but, tracks. But me personally, I do. I do. But look, me personally, I can't. I can't sit. I want tracks album. with a lot of hip hop artists that are out right now because a lot of it is trash. But I now, if he could give me 16 tracks of a little bit of this country, a little bit of this rock, and I'm like, oh, okay, this is. I don't different. know anything else he makes, so I'm curious but he, to see. He could tell where a story, yeah, I am. especially I'm very so, curious. especially because the whole thing in country is like literally talking about no, like your cool. shit, like your hat, your horse, that's, your ranch. That's <laughs> all. That's all. <laughs> Sam, Barbara right. Jean. And it's the same thing like Nene. Like, you did something for the kids, something for them to have fun to, a new dance and all that. No, nope, and he it was really a might be record. about this life, though. We get one of these every, listen, every year we get <laughs> a racks, said, hold on. One of these. We get a racks on racks on racks. Not even a person. <laughs> right. We get a racks on racks on racks. Then we get a, um, I'm cashing out. Got a condo nah, in my wait. crib, baby. We catch it. Then we get Rax a- Rax on Rax on Rax. You talking about Tiger song? That's YC. Oh, YC song. That's okay. Y- and we don't even remember how he looked. Nah. <laughs> and we don't remember how- Because Tiger had a Rax song, too. Rack I had yeah, a whole- Rack Tiger's Rack an artist. I had a whole dance See, there's them. a thing. Like, all right. It's like an NBA player who scores 50, and then the next night he scored three. Greatness is I don't, first of all I don't celebrate mediocrity and I'm not saying mm. that what he did is mediocre because mm. one hit is still more than none mm. and there's a lot of people who can't get one so I salute anybody that's had one hit in this industry and I think that's something we don't take serious but mm-hmm. greatness is what I like I like great albums I like classics I like shit that's fire so you you like a body of work yeah, yeah. yeah that, and I also like it on a consistent basis I don't want one good album and the rest of your shit is trash yeah, yeah. like. I just don't feel like there's anything coming after this. And t- to he be honest, a lot of these, you. and we, I mean, we felt like this with a lot of artists. Yo, they might surprise you and they get one and then the next, like Flex said, the whack rapper, the mumble rapper replaces the mumble rapper with the next mumble rapper. Mm-hmm. And it's the truth. Every year we get one, we get one of these songs. And then three years later, you're like, yo, you remember what's the name? Who? <laughs> Oh, I know that song. Oh, that shit was hot back then, right? And, you know, it's it's cool for the moment. I think it's great for the boundaries that it's broke. But do I think this is an artist? Like, first of all, it's called art because it's not something everyone can do. But I think anyone can go in their booth and just mimic that, that energy. Horses in the bag. But one, <laughs> I, I was just on. thinking in my head but, to us. <laughs> but can anyone imitate a great rapper? No. Right. You ask niggas to freestyle on the spot, they... Hold on, hold on, hold on. Yo, I hate yeah. when people do that. All right, so, but here's the thing, though, because Tiger is somebody who people thought wasn't going to do that. So is Cardi B. And Cardi B well, is still pushing out on. bangers. But we don't know. <laughs> nah, Cardi B is still chart, chart, no, chopping. You amazing. know what I'm saying? And, but the thing is, it's a little different when you don't write your music. Mm, see, this right, is so a whole other conversation. We're going to take a break from everybody. No, it's fine. No, it's but like, I actually want to hear from you real quick. What is though. a rapper that, can I ask a question though? Yeah. What is a rapper that doesn't Yo, write music? Yo, I ask this the every time. The I ask The only gift, the only, time. see a singer, if I write a song for Beyonce, Ciara can't sing it. And that's no disrespect. There's vocal tones gotcha. and there's vocal levels. Okay. Because um, um, we talked about this before. Certain right? artists can't sing yeah. a Mariah Carey song, especially 90s Mariah with that vocal tone and that uh, vocal level. Uh, yeah. Now, in hip hop, the only talent you have is your writing ability. That's literally it. But what does the delivery to the matter too? Which is and why I Drake think you can train deliver. anyone to deliver something. Mm. Like if you get you cheat, put them in a camp to. All right, you got to get a little. Hmm. That that's why they took the awards away from Millie Vanilli. Like, what do we give? But them? not for nothing, they count. Like some people will really go in and be like, "Nah, I help him write that because I told him to say uh." Yeah, I told that, him to say well, that. Well, that's because that's just the way the business works. It's split right. sheets. If someone gives you an idea, they get writing credit. Is. Right. But we're talking about verses, hooks. Anyone, if someone writes your hook, I don't. That's not discrediting you. No one grows up to say, "Man, I want to be the best chorus writer of all time." No, <laughs> no one grows up writing choruses. Like I want to write hooks. People grow up to be an MC. Your writing ability is your story and your gift. If someone is writing my rhymes for me and they like, spitting them, and I'm spitting, it's just like it's my story. It's like. That's crazy. Like, you literally are a test dummy. You're in the booth, <laughs> like, reading, uh, okay, I'm going, like, you're, you're, you're spinning someone else's story. 
Mm-hmm. So wait, I just have a question. Like, what is your talent if you don't write your rhymes? I just want to know. I've been asking I've this been question for a long, and you're the only think? person who really right. answered it the way it and needed by to all be means, answered. I don't mean no nothing. disrespect like, yeah. to anyone. Yeah, I, it's just yeah. a real question because in the 90s, people lost their career over it. Mm-hmm. In the early 2000s, people lost their career over like, oh, you ain't write that? Mm-hmm. That's And how heartbroken would you feel if you heard Biggie didn't write Juicy? Yeah. If, how would you feel about Big? How would you feel about Pac if he didn't write Dear Mama? That, like, about his like, mom? How, you- <laughs> how would you feel? You would be torn. <laughs> Nigga ain't even write this, bro. It didn't even come from the heart. So it's certain <laughs> shit I can't feel because I'm like, damn, I already know this ain't your story. This is He's the only story. person to really yeah, answer yeah, this question like that. So who we going to, Jigga? So how do, yeah, how do you feel about what he just said and what helps you write? What helps me write is like I put things... Into a certain message of what I'm going off of, like you feel me, off my day or what I did in the few, like in the past type shit. You feel me or mm-hmm. you feel me? I just put it together and put it in my own words, like put it to where I know the people that I chill around, the people, not even the people that I chill around, like just the people you trying to reach. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. the people I'm trying to reach, like just the stories that I that I give out is crazy, like definitely. All right, so to translate, basically, you the way you write is you trying to reach certain people, so you target them and you try to like get the lingo to match something that'll connect with them. Yeah. All right, cool. <laughs> <laughs> so, what about you? Like, how do you how do you write? Like, what? What's Get your, your pre- process? Do you write? Because some people, going, some people don't write. Yeah. They go in the booth and this they freestyle allegedly. Right. Nah, that, that, that shit somewhere. crazy to me, but. It's like, <laughs> I mean, I mean, unless you one of them people that's dumb, nice. Like I had Jay, he don't write shit. He just he, he just it memorize now, yeah. it. His yeah, Lil Wayne don't either. Yeah, literally. like that's that's crazy to me. But Fuck. it's like me, I kind of like I be kind of like training myself for different scenarios. Like I, you got a situation where it's like you got to write this on the spot, and I don't really like to do that. Mm-hmm. But there's gonna be situations where you just gotta write immediately. And it's like, I like to sit down and really, like, cook up my thoughts, but you can't always do that. Like, niggas, niggas will be in the studio, like, yo, we got four hours, like, I need you on this. And you got to just bang it out. Mm. But then I also like to, like, have, like, a song or, or a verse in the cut where I'm just, like, letting it cook. Like, I come back to it years later type shit. Like, mm. like just on some, that's, that's kind of how niggas just grew up. Like, you care about the lyricism so much, and... I feel that shit don't really matter anymore, but I be doing that shit for myself. Like, like I'm. You not hold getting, yourself to yeah. a certain standard. Not even the standard, like just the shit can't be no nine to five shit. Like, yeah, I'm just writing this, and I'm. You know what I mean? Like, I got to do some passion shit, but yeah, there might have to be a lot of a lot of like nine to five feeling type verses. You know what I'm saying? It, it has might to be authentic. Be, uh, yeah, yeah, like. Unless I can create a situation where it's like, yo, I'm just writing and creating music on my own time at my own speed, but that's not realistic all the time. And then sometimes I do, I might just get inspired and do some completely different shit. Like, y'all talking about jumping into other genres and shit, and it's like, I don't like that, but if inspiration is there, like, you can't you can't stop the creativity or, or be like, yo, don't make this art, you know what I'm saying? But... It's like my only problem with that is like if you consistently keep making different shit, like is it still hip hop? Like if you own, it's like it's one thing if you staying at your core, Fact. and then you come out and do something different and come back. But if you just keep making country, like say the little Nas X just keep dropping country joints, or he do some next polka music joint or some shit <laughs> like that. Like, how is this a hip hop artist? Like, mm. when they when they said they wasn't gonna let him on Billboard, I was like, I feel him. That's the type of time hip hop need to be on. Like, I agree like with yo, that. stop letting everybody come in, that. get a bag, and dictate what we are, and like, like Post Malone pulling yeah, up, I agree and then. With that. Miley I Cyrus, like everybody Malone. pulling up yeah. in the culture, and then let dipping them do out. what they want, celebrate them, yeah. they get their bag, and they be like, oh, I don't fuck with that nigga yeah. shit. Like, that's, I that's said the same right, shit, though. That's I exactly said the what they shit, say though. afterwards. Yeah, that's what I've that's said, too. That's you know my writing process, son? Like, I be in the shower, son. Shit just be hitting me. <laughs> <laughs> so, I have a question for everybody here also, right? 
if there was one artist in the industry that are alive that you had the chance to like they tell you like yo we gonna really take a break first or no we taking a break yeah you said take a break all right after this question <laughs> <laughs> that are alive though that tell you and they give you your, your kudos or whatever they're like yo your shit is fire i love your music who would that be more meaningful coming from Probably my aunt. Fact. Aww. My aunt, cause she really got me like making music and all that. It's not she didn't get me into it. I already had the feeling of the sound. I already loved the sound. You feel mm-hmm. me? And that's what made me push stronger in th- with them music. You feel me? So yeah, definitely huddle. That's definitely. That's sweet. Yep. It's like back in the days, I probably would have said Eminem, but it's like. I don't know. It's it's been so many disappointments and like <laughs> you find out shit is a lie, and shit is a facade. I'm trying and, so hard not to and, laugh. And, <laughs> and, and and just mad know. shit just be bullshit and like you know what I mean like now it's like I, I don't think I would care about anybody like <laughs> anybody pull up on me I'm I like I'm, I'm just <laughs> like I don't want nobody's validation. Damn. Like like I don't know. I just I feel like I've been through like a a a marathon of like finding out bullshit you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. and it's kind of like <laughs> niggas will pull up on you especially shorties will pull up on me and be like yo your shit so dope yo 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 and then they just trying to bag because I, I don't know like because you got girls in your mouth and and i got what because <laughs> you got girls in nah 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 they think you got that bag right that aldo bag <laughs> 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 so what about you? Um, for me it'd definitely be Tupac or Hove. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, there's still a, you know there's there's still that chance for Hove to hear it, you mm-hmm. know, and you get that. But Pac for sure. Um, he left the game and um, he's the most prolific being the game has ever seen. Um, and he's the most impactful. You know, I think Hove is the greatest. When in terms of like. With Pac left at 25 years old is unreal. You got to think about where a lot of artists were at 25 years old. Biggie, too, God rest his soul, because Big died at 25, too. The impact they left at 25 years old in this game is ridiculous to me. Like, it's crazy. Mm-hmm. And um, if Pac told me my shit was fire, I'd just be like, man, I could die. Mama, happy. I made it. <laughs> so, <clears throat> definitely Pac. That's dope. All right, guys. So we're going to take a quick break. We're going to get back to these artists. You guys are going to find out what they got coming up. And that's how we do. Facts. BRB. Hey, y'all. We're back. Y'all know how we do. Um, So <laughs> I had a question, right? It's a lot of artists now just dropping music. They don't they do not do promo and, and nothing like that. You don't even know that they had an album out. Do you uh, guys feel y'all like... Y'all not even built for that. <laughs> Let's talk about do that. Do y'all feel like that's like the new way and it's working or it's working against them? Y'all yeah, talking about artists that's on? Like I, famous artists? This just artists? seems to be the no, thing, period, regular, now. Everybody's Because there's a difference. There's underground artists, there's any right. artists, yeah, and I'm, then there's that's like... What I'm asking. Mainstream yeah, artists doing it, but so, yeah, it's it's a trend now. I think, I think it back. It's starting to backfire. Mm-hmm. I think it worked the first go rounds. Like you mm. know, Beyonce changed right. the world. She's the one who did it. Mm-hmm. Um, a couple people did it after her. J I know Cole. J Cole's yeah. done it. Uh, he has a cult following though, so right. it's always gonna work. Um, but I think it's starting to backfire now mm-hmm. because, and I think they're starting to take heed to that. Like, cause Cole traditionally is. You know, dropping it out the blue and we like, oh shit! But look, now he's now he's coming for respect because he knows that if he wants to get that number one spot, he got that middle child record like going crazy. Yeah. He got the Revenge of the Dreamers, but he's building anticipation now. Mm-hmm. And you know, I feel like, in my personal opinion, it backfired with Jay Z and Beyonce's album, mm-hmm. dropping it on title the first week. The album sold like one forty, and it, it, it debuted at number two. And that's just unheard of for those two. Mm. But do you feel like it's because they dropped it on Tidal as Absolutely. opposed to dropping it on Tidal Apple? Has, Tidal only has 4% of the streaming market. Right. right. You know, they don't release their numbers to the market. Um, but they don't. Apple Music has 28 million subscribers and Spotify has 26 million. They're the dominance. If Tidal has 4% of the streaming market, how many subscribers do they have? Yeah. And, you know, 
I'm all for what they're doing because they paying us the most. My title royalties be dope. Like, they, right. they shits hit when the, the, the statement come in. I be like, damn, you can really make money on title. Mm -hmm. So if we all actually got behind I mean, title and, and subscribe, mm -hmm. we would be eating right now because title is paying everyone. I think to make a million dollars, you need a billion streams on um, YouTube or Spotify. But I think to make a million dollars on title, I think you need like a couple hundred thousand streams. Wow. So they look what they really it easy paying. For you guys to come but in. they need the subscriptions yeah. though, and we yeah. need to really get behind them. Like yeah, that, exactly. I think that was the sacrifice they wanted to make too, yeah. to not go with an Apple and a Spotify. Absolutely. And, they, and he's trying to make a statement every time he does yeah. it. But if you're talking, and I think he's sacrificing the number right. one album for the for the the message. Exactly. Because we really do need to subscribe to Title yeah. and get behind Hove and what he's doing. But I think it's backfiring. I think. Now to subscribe, like people like, oh shit, it came out. Yeah, exactly. All right, because it's no more physical buys no more. Everyone's streaming, so if you're not weary, but if there's anticipation like Drake did, like what Drake does, you hype, mm -hmm. be thirsty for that. And when it come <laughs> out, he's doing nine hundred k in a million first week every go round. So, right. so what are some ways that you guys promo? I promo. <laughs> now my promo is crazy though. Well, you send news to everybody? Like, like, crazy. <laughs> 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 that shit like, nigga. Yeah. Nigga said 100,000 likes, I'll take my hood off. Right. That's crazy. I'm promotion lit, though. Like, everybody fucking my shit. Like, I come out like, oh, you heard this with me? Like, yo, what's up? Are you dropping some shit? I got you right now. Show them, feel me? Then they showing everybody they know. Next person, they showing everybody they know. Then I'm making like little flyers. I'll be throwing them and shit. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so word of mouth is your biggest yeah. market then. Yeah. Okay. Right. So the street people sleep, sleep on that. Yeah. yeah. That's what's up. That's a fact. That makes sense. How well, do you? I, I rock with the the influencer marketing. Um, mm. and I'll do regular like Facebook promo, but I'm that's like a ongoing process for me. Like. I'm always studying techniques in promotion and marketing. So it's like I try to come up with I'm trying to think of like a real slick thing to do, you know what I'm saying? Like I that's its own thing to do homework in. So it's it's kinda like it's never gonna be just one way that I'm doing it. Mm, okay. Guerrilla marketing never go out of style. Mm-hmm. Flyers, posters, mm -hmm. but that shit is an investment. We in an era of no one wanting to invest. Nobody wants yeah. that money. The internet is the scapegoat yeah. to invest in, and it's not. Like again, you playing lotto, hoping you just drop it and if the world stop for what mm -hmm. you're doing. But word of mouth, like he said, flyers work. Mm -hmm. You keep seeing it everywhere. Eventually, that person gonna stop saying, "Let me just follow. It. Let me see this. Let me yeah. see what he's talking yeah. about." Right. It's like guerrilla marketing is the gateway. Like that's why street teams existed. They went everywhere, held up picket fences, signs, flyers, everything. They got paid for that and they interned for that because it works. Guerrilla marketing is the key. And if you mix guerrilla marketing with online marketing, now it's oh shit. You seen that? Now the algorithm pop up. Yo, I just seen this flyer on the floor. Nah, son working. Let me tune right, in. You right. win. But if you're just begging people online, like, yo, help me, B. Like, y'all niggas don't support me. So I, what, at what point do you feel like you guys need a manager? Like, what's the importance of a manager in your career right now? What does a manager really do that you can't? People want a manager, a.k.a. they want a bank. Niggas want somebody to put up money that they not that's willing to put up. That's an investor, yeah. Yeah, but that's what people or think machine. a manager is. And in my opinion, a manager kind of is. To me, a manager got to believe in you, like... Puffy was managing Biggie first. Like he, Biggie was living with Puff. But at the same token, he saw greatness. A lot of people be warranting something that they won't give themselves. Like to me, you want, you, if you don't invest in yourself, how could you really want someone to invest in you too? I don't mm -hmm. get it. Like what have you given to your, your career path that you want someone else to give? Mm -hmm. Like niggas make it because they was hustling CDs out their trunk. Like Nipsey was on Slauson. Giving his mixtapes, selling his albums for years, so they see that now the label will invest in you or your distributor will invest in you because you invested first. It doesn't come from yo, please help yo. You should you should. What have you done to warrant that energy? You got to match energy, like, and I just think that's the problem. Like people ain't. What does a manager really do? I could book a gig in my email. 
Yo, I'm trying to book you. All right. <laughs> what are you paying? <laughs> okay. How many tickets I got to sell? Okay. I'll get it together. Yo, I just booked a show. I need y'all niggas to go hard with me. I need y'all. I got to show out for this show right here because, you know, a lot is on stake. Copy. Say less. What is the manager going to do? Answer that email for you that you can't answer? <laughs> what level are we really at to be begging for a manager? Mm -hmm. Now, when you on and you got multiple people getting checks under you, yes, you need someone to handle that. But... Again, you're coming what, up, you don't need you. One. They gotta have yeah. something to manage. Yeah, okay, so how y'all feel? Yeah, it's you could do mad shit by yourself. Like if you serious, you could do a lot of shit by yourself. Like I seen people who they they making bank. Like they not only doing music, but they do music. They shooting videos. They throwing their own showcases. Like they doing all types of different ventures. They selling clothes. They they like shit is crazy. And, and they don't got no managers. You see what I'm saying? Like, unless you want some Drake fab type shit, you really don't need a manager. And and I'm seeing, like, on I don't be wanting to hate on niggas' hustle, but I see people charging for managerial services. <laughs> and it's like, Crazy. it's like, that's just, that's just some, like, I'm appealing to laziness. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Like, that's that's all that is. Like you're lazy and you don't want to put it. You don't want to find shit out for yourself. Mm -hmm. You don't want to. I feel like I've got. He's so got me. irritated. Wait, 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 he's wait, talking wait. big facts. <laughs> nah, y'all got me feeling like like I just shitted on somebody. Nah, yeah. you yeah. just the way you talk right. is just <laughs> funny. Like I know you don't even it's to come nah, up I'm, like I'm, that. I'm it's like shit. stressful. <laughs> You I just was. seem like you sick of everything. <laughs> oh, yeah. Son, I was waiting for y'all to ask me this. Fuck out of <laughs> here. But don't let that go over your head, though. That was facts. Right. Yeah. Now we're going to replay this on that topic. I used to so email like, 100 blogs a day from my email mm -hmm. on my computer. Mm -hmm. Play, would y'all please give me a shot? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I ain't get the post for two years mm -hmm. from the biggest blogs in, on rap. You know, two dope boys. Uh, hip hop since 1987. It took me oh, years. Mm. All of them. They was like, this dude been bugging me. <laughs> like, and I, it was a backhanded post, but it helped because yeah. people wanted to look like, who is yeah. this? Yeah. And then my shit started booming. But at the end of the day, I wanted it that bad. And I didn't yeah. even know what happened. So niggas was calling, yo, you on two dope boys. I'm like, word. <laughs> I'm like, oh shit. Now I went from like 5,000 views to 44,000. Mm. Nice. But I knew I had the music. I just needed a platform, and I needed right. an ear. And I told him, like, yo, give me a shot every single day. Then when I had the regular email, I started going around calling, what's their direct email? Someone <laughs> find me the direct email. But this is shit niggas ain't hungry enough to do. It's a headache. And, and my thing is, like, if you're not willing to pay your dues, like, people just trying to skip the pay your dues part. Like, I don't get it. Y'all skipping the paying your dues part. Niggas just want to make it. People are obsessed with the end result. Mm. But the journey makes the end result fulfilling. That's why yeah. when these niggas get on, they fall off quick from the circle, drugs, the, the power issues because they didn't experience a journey. And that's the dangers of going viral. You don't know who's real around you because it happened overnight. You don't know who's real, but when you on a journey, niggas drop out the race yeah, with you. Yo, bro, I can't do this that's no more. Right, niggas ain't right, coming right, to the right, shows right, no right. more. Okay. When you're on a journey, people start to stick around. Like, there's some who stick around. Yeah. I believe, my nigga, you going to make it. Then there's the niggas who have kids. They start getting jobs, careers, and they just like, yo, I can't really make it no more. Mm -hmm. Now you know who's day one, who's going to you going to take care of and make sure they good. But when it happens overnight, all them niggas poker face on it. We on this ride, baby. We right. here. We here. Yeah. So now you don't know who's fake. You don't know who's stealing. You don't know who hates you on the low. You don't know who wants your spot. So it's really about, yo, trust, like, yo, enjoy the journey. Mm. I, like, I, I opened up for Kendrick Lamar before, and they was like, yo, it's in Greensboro, North Carolina. I had, like, four days notice. Mm-hmm. Called out like, yo, I'm not gonna be working this weekend. <laughs> right. I hopped on a China bus, 16 hours. Five. Open up for Kendrick. Five. It's worth it. <laughs> the fuck I'm gonna do? Like I'm out. Yeah. Yo, who live in Greensboro? <laughs> yo, I need a place to stay, bro. Right. right. So, like, and then it's and then it's even worse on the way back because it's like, I right, show done. 16 hours back to New York, mm -hmm. but I don't give a fuck. These are beautiful stories. You know what I'm saying? Like, 
But this is the shit no one wants to do. Yeah. And to me, I guess when you love it, it's fulfilling. Like, these are great memories when you love what you do. Like, niggas don't love this shit. This is a scapegoat for them to make money. And that's why I said it's a low-hanging fruit. Everybody you hear rap about, like, yo, or not in the interviews, I'm just here for the bag. I'm here for the money. That's why the music sound the way it do. There's no love in it. Mm-hmm. It's no different than food. People cook your food. They say don't eat everybody's food. You don't know what they... They ain't making that shit with love. <laughs> like, when there's passion in what people do, it tastes different, it sounds different, it feels different. Like, and that's why I listen to greatness. I listen to Hove. I listen to Ye. I listen to Pusha, Fab, J. Cole, Big Sean, Kendrick, Joyner Lucas. Like, that's greatness. So, I like, when you were talking about the mumble, we got a lot of ill artists out here. And they selling all the great, all the hot artists outsell these niggas. Even though these mumble rappers is saturating the market, they can't go sell past That's fifty thousand. Mm-hmm. Lil Pump got twenty million followers. J Cole got two. Lil Pump's album sold 20, 23, 40, 30, 000, 30, 000 copies first week. J Cole last album sold five hundred thousand in the first week. Mm-hmm. So who's really losing? <clears throat> Even though this one got the, they look cooler. Like sometimes. 500,000 people bought cold shit the first week and 30. That's because there's no, when it's all said and done. When it the don't trend, translate. When the, no, when the trends fade. Mm-hmm, and we right. can start back to to snap music, to crunk music, to happy-go-lucky music, to tech, like, no disrespect to the Texas Trill, but there was a time where Houston had it on a lock and everybody tried to mimic it. Mm-hmm. Then you got the all those phases, when it's all said and done, there's one thing that'll never go out of style, and that's the art of rhyming. Mm-hmm. Drake always has his bars on his album. There's never going to be an album you don't hear Drake going off. Cole, bars. Mm-hmm. Kendrick, bars. <laughs> great music. When it's all trends fade, the art of actually rapping is never going nowhere. That shit comes full circle every time, and that's why they outsell everybody. Someone just said artist development has disappeared from music labels. And they don't want to spend the money. Fair. So I have a question too that now, and I'm gonna start with you, and I'm gonna bring it around. What's that one point in your life where you knew music was for you, hip hop was for you, and even in that one setback, setback maybe that made you almost want to not do it, but you continue because of the passion for it, like he was explaining it just now. Um, I think it started like when I when I started develop like developing new sounds and learning how to put pain into my, you know what I mean, mm-hmm. like putting my actual. Mm-hmm. My whole storyline inside. I wasn't trying to make no type of sugar cold nothing or anything mm-hmm. that have somebody just bopping. Like I didn't even care what other people think at first. You feel mm-hmm. me? I just wanted to make something that like push, push strong and like straight feeling that goes with it. So mm-hmm. what was that point in your life like? Like that was probably about a year ago. Facts. Uh, yeah, so, you go. so recently you just had that I want to hear his growth. music yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to pull him out real quick Like what What are we talking about What nah, happened started, Your cat so died bad. Like it started, what <laughs> It started when like I was playing ball that shit type shit So As I was playing ball I was kind of making music at the same mm-hmm. time So As I'm making music I'm making songs that, that I could feel At the same time But I feel like oh, I'm missing something So boom I, like, nah, I gotta so close my, to the mic. Oh, I'm mm-hmm. sorry. I, got, I was like, nah, I got to put my actual pain into this. Like, actually, So what was the pain? Yeah. The pain was like actually what I was going through every single day. Like stepping outside, like coming outside in the trenches, like exactly what I'm seeing, what's going on around Sex. me. You feel me? Mm-hmm. Just throwing that in there. And as I started throwing it out, I'm like, oh, nah, this shit is different. Like, <laughs> this shit different. Where you from? Yeah. I'm from Harlem. Okay. Uptown, baby. Yeah. The Heights. Okay. Mm. Yeah. So what about you? What was that moment like for you? And when was that moment for you? That's what you saying like when, when I first got passionate or some shit that made me want to quit? Both. Because I feel like that's usually the point where you realize you're passionate about it when you kind of want to give up, but you don't. So, yeah, I guess you're right. But mm-hmm. it's like I got super passionate. Like, I had, and like, it turns out my cousin is Charles Hamilton. I don't know if y'all oh, want to wow. hear some long ass mm-hmm. story mm-hmm. behind That's that. crazy. Mm-hmm. And that's crazy because yeah, H.O. wanted to... That's why I be wanting to cut my hair. You I'm know like, H.O.? Yo. H.O.? <laughs> that was his manager. He used to... He wanted to... Man, I just... Oh, man. Yeah, yeah, oh, so yeah. y'all all related to right, him. Right, now y'all cousins. Right, right. <laughs> 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 yeah, we can't <laughs> Yeah, so. like... You know what I mean? Like, I was, I was on, like, 
kind of like on tour with him with his okay. his last signing and i'm like i was like damn this this rap shit kind of went easy you know what <laughs> i mean and that shit i was like i was really like wow like i'm about to just it's gonna be that easy like this yeah. crazy like i'm like i'm so lucky you know what i mean i'm thankful mm -hmm. and that shit fell apart crazy mm -hmm. and you know I was expecting certain other lit shit to happen off of that, and it was like it ain't happened. And I was mm. like, "Yo, it's it's dead just on me." Like, mm. so I was like, "I was like, I got me. Let me get busy." So, I'm getting busy for like a year. Every show I could pop up on, you know what I mean? Like, I'm on some. I know I I know I tried to sell you this last time, but buy another one. Like mm. I'm like I don't give a fuck who you are. <laughs> I don't I don't. You could be Jay Z. You could be some old lady. I'm selling you this. Like, I'm forcing <laughs> Simmons, it old on lady. You. Yeah, like yeah. you might have to call the cops. That's that's how crazy <laughs> I was moving. Like that's I heard you hunger. now. Yeah, 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 yeah. But right. it's like it's like you know I kept increasing and increasing the work ethic, and I'm like yo. Nah, I need, I need, I need more. Like, where's, where's the bread, son? Like, where? <laughs> so, you know, I just, at, at one point I just stopped sleeping, like, mm. and I wasn't keeping track of my health. And it's like, mm. you, you had a little moment where everybody's like, "Yo, shit, dope!" Like, your, your small little bubble is mm -hmm. going crazy, but it's like, it's not enough. And then yeah. you, you keep trying to pop up to everything and go harder and keep writing and answer these emails and and hit up every like he said every blog and shit but then it, it just like a nigga health just caught up with him crazy mm -hmm. and like you know what i mean that shit that shit got me on the sebi shit now like <laughs> no funny shit like that's what's up bro yeah it, Yo, it's, i knew he was gonna say some funny shit i don't know why <laughs> <laughs> you see me trying to hold it down nah, i'm bit my limit <laughs> I'm like, yo, yo, it's gonna be good. Yo, it, it, it's crazy because this shit introduced me to a whole new world. Like, yeah. I started bugging out and shit, and I'm like, yo, this not even me. Like, I don't yeah. move like this. But I was super paranoid and like, like I was <laughs> like a crazy. crackhead out yeah. here. Yeah, I was looking, I was looking real <laughs> Damn, crazy. Yeah. But you know, I started doing the study and shit. That's thank God we in that internet era. I'm like, mm -hmm. this would have happened in like the '70s. I'd have been out the game. <laughs> 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 they would have sent me to a doctor. They would have gave me some bullshit pills. I'm paying for that forever. You know what I'm saying? Like, but I'm Yo. looking online. They like, oh nah, like you know, this shit fuck up your brain. You do this. You don't get enough sleep. You eating too oh, much, man. too much starch. I'm like, oh shit. I was doing all of this. I wasn't right. sleeping. Yeah. I was eating like 3:30 in the morning, having mad bread. They like, yo, that shit kills your brain, <laughs> and you start bugging and. You, so I'm like, oh shit, I'm studying my sebi, I'm finding out about herbs. I'm like, yo, this a whole new world. Like nice. So you vegan um, now or I'm I'll be trying, man. <laughs> you could do it, bro. It's, it's you like, trans vegan? Hi, right. I'm, yeah. I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm fake, fucking I'm fake vegan, fake woke, you know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm What's I'm, your favorite little herb? My favorite I'll be fucking with Elderberry. Oh <laughs> nah, I ain't get to that yet. I ain't get to that. Yet. <laughs> I be I be fucking with the maca root, the turmeric. Um, oh, yes, I, ginger. Um, nigga, okay, put them on, son. Hey. Put them on, son. <laughs> fucking um. Yeah, that's what's up, niggas man. Niggas is putting me on to minerals. I'm like, okay. Fuck yeah. is this shit? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, yo, I'm I'm a nigga who is sip honey. <laughs> And go to go to footprints. Get me a rasta pot, <laughs> oxtails, and it's like. Now I'm learning about colloidal silver yeah. and, and, and um, calcium, magnesium. Talk about it. Talk shit. about it. Like, Talk about yeah. it. That's then, what's up. You know what I mean? Niggas was in the crib because some of my niggas, they, they a little niggery. You know? They, <laughs> they not... They not <laughs> Get out, nigga. They not niggery. Get out. <laughs> They want my shit dying right now. He's that's crazy. Yo. Yo. That's cool. Yo. Like, he's been that. having me weak this whole Yo, time. Yo, but he like, talking real crazy. shit, though. He, he talking real shit. He's crazy. He's talking real shit. He's talking real shit. Nah, go on, bro. Go <laughs> on. Yo. I'm bugging out, and, and then I'm telling <laughs> niggas about... I'm telling niggas about Sabi and these roots <laughs> and, and, and and all the fucking government conspiracy. Yes. My niggas like niggas start joking on me. Niggas been joking on me for like two years now. Like my nigga niggas that ever since Ninja Turtle, these niggas been coming. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, look at the Ninja Turtle nigga coming through. Oh, there you go. Nigga started calling me Mr. Nigga said, all right, bro. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> oh my god, yo, it's crazy. Oh, like, shit. like, you could really be living in your own bubble <laughs> and you don't even know that you living wrong. You know, what yeah, I mean? like, that's, that's a, a fact. fact. So, I, I didn't know I was eating that crazy. I'm like, yo, this is mm. just what I eat. You know right. what I'm saying? Like, that's programming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, <laughs> now I'm, I'm, I'm like 92% vegan, you know. <laughs> That's a oh good ass percent God. though. Right. That is a good it percent. Is. I'm finding all the vegan spots. I'll be feeling weird though. Like I niggas. can put you on, bro. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're gonna chop it up, man. Facts. You look like hell no, I ain't going vegan. <laughs> <laughs> like, he, he look young. Yeah. He got time. That is see, that is see, that's what you're yeah, gonna hit him yet. Yeah. Seventeen. Nigga say what? Oh, is he bro, old bro, enough to be in there? Have fun. Have fun. Look, he can't I mean, nigga said his parents ain't signed no fucking consent to be on real. <laughs> that nigga about to eat a Whopper at four in the morning and right. wake up with a six pack. We got class tomorrow. We got to go. Nigga, metabolism is everything right now. He can eat whatever the fuck he want right now. That's he don't got no pimples, no nothing. Fuck out of here. Fuck out of here. Fuck your whole life. He collect the order drums right now. Nah, I'm just fucking with everything he's saying yeah. though because like it's dope to hear niggas like talk about that shit yeah. and yeah. it's real like because that shit need to be cool yeah because i'm vegan now and it's like mm. that shit is dope to hear like damn niggas is out here trying like so shout out to raw my vegan yeah like oh I don't this nigga yeah. next level this nigga next nah, level just, I'm like, too skinny. You, I'm like... You, like all right when you start learning about this shit there's no argument no more yeah it's yeah. like i i you're really wildin' when you keep doing, yeah. like, and it's like he said too though. Like you, you think in your bubble, this little bubble you living in is right, mm -hmm. and it's not. But when you program, the, it's like a slave being born into slavery. Mm. How how would they know if freedom is the right way to live if they only knew? Slavery is four hundred years. Mm -hmm. Like you was born into slavery, you are gonna die into slavery as some a lot of our ancestors did. So Man. how would they know anything else? All they know is slavery from birth. So they think that's the like, the normal way of living is working for somebody else. Man. So when you grow up in birth and you drinking milk and you eating all this shit, you think that shit is literally like okay. Mm -hmm. And it's weird. My, pa my, my parents kept a lot of shit from us. But nah, when you start doing research, you be tripping like, yo, this shit is like, nah, like diabetes don't run in your family it's just no one runs in your family right you need to hit right. the fucking gym Bitch. like and it's the food we eat <laughs> nobody the, runs in your family like you know shade it's, okay. but, but on this nigga really a rapper <laughs> this nigga's nah, this nigga's really a rapper cause we're not gonna let that shade this just run around that is a bar that's a crazy bar nigga said hashtag it nigga nobody runs in your family but nah it's I'm putting that in my next verse fuck is you talking about not just straight too far off topic I I would say to back to the question you mm -hmm. said. Um, Damn, I ain't even answer that word. Oh shit! <laughs> nah, nah, you, you did. Um, you did. Yeah, you, did. Yeah, you, did. Yeah, you really did. dug into that turning point you in did. your life you did. <laughs> where you really cleansed your your mind, body, and soul. That's yeah. what I got from it. I think, honestly, I think when I was in college, like you be in class, and I was just like, "Yo, this shit ain't it." Like <laughs> Chief called. Like, Chief said, this ain't it, Chief. Like, I was just like, bro, like, I'm really in here doing this shit for my parents. Right. And I knew what I wanted to do. And I was wilding at the time. Like, he said, health and you tired all the time? Because I was going to school, school in the morning, work after, and then the studio after work. So you waking up at, like, 6 in the morning, getting home at, like, 2 every day. And I was like, yo, one of these shits got to go. Yeah. And I was like, music ain't going nowhere and money ain't going nowhere. So it was like I took a leap of faith, like fuck it, you know they're gonna be mad, but I have to live with that as a, as my choice in my yeah. life. Like fuck this mm -hmm. shit, I'm doing this for y'all anyway. But I took what I learned from it. I did a year, and I actually learned a lot on the business side. Um, but yeah, like I was just like, yo, ain't no degrees for rappers. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like I can't, and I'm what I'm gonna do? Like work for somebody else? Like. If you don't build your dream, someone gonna hire you to build theirs. And I was Fact. like, nah, I'm trying to build mine. Like, I want to build my shit. Why well, I'm gonna work yeah. for somebody else to build theirs? And I'm not saying that's a problem right. because everybody can't be the boss. Right. And that's the problem with this era anyway. Is like, so there's nothing wrong with working for somebody because some people's gift, you know, like 
they say everybody like Jay Z said everybody got genius level talent, mm -hmm. and I don't think mm -hmm. people get that meaning. There's a depth to that. Some yeah. people's talent is running the company. Yeah. So yeah, it don't gotta be yours. Yeah. Your talent is being Scottie Pippen. Yeah. And everybody can't be a, a star, but everybody can be a star at their role. Yep. And when you know your role in your life, and you know your role in your your career, you'll be great. Cause Scotty got six rings too. Mm -hmm. He don't got the finals MVPs like Jordan, but he got six championships. But he mm -hmm. know his role. But if everybody want to be LeBron, ain't going nowhere. Right. Can't win a championship with six Michael Jordans. Or, I mean, five Jordans or five LeBrons, five Kobe's. It's not gonna work. You need a Shaq. You need a Derek Fisher. You need people who know their role and be great at it. And for me, it was just like with school. I just said, nah, music is really where I want to be. Because then I started seeing people say, yo, you really got this, bro. Like, what's good? And the the trying time for me, I would say, is like, you hit a you hit a point in your career where it's just like, yo, like, I needed to go to another level and it's not going there. Mm -hmm. That's where you start driving yourself crazy. Because it's like, yo, what am I doing wrong? And it, it frustrates you. And you be a fool and you be a liar to say it don't. And I don't care who you are. Everybody hit that point where it's like, all right, my views is going down. I ain't getting the same likes. Right. What the fuck is going on? The validation isn't the same. So that's the shit you just want to pack it up. Mm -hmm. And I got to a point where I was just like, all right, this shit ain't working. Like, And I just took a year off. I started hanging with my friends. Like, you know what? I've been chasing music so long. I curve my friends every time, like vacations. Nah, I got shows. I got to go to the studio. I ain't never going on a vacation with my friends. I wanted to be normal for once. I've been chasing music longer than probably everybody because, like, since I was a kid, I literally wanted to be a rapper. So all I knew was the studio and rapping and doing this shit. Like, I used to sleep outside of Def Jam just to wait to get hold to, like, talk to me. You know what I'm saying? That's crazy. And That's for, like, crazy. a year, he ignored me for a year straight. And one night, he was just like, yo, what's up? I was like, oh, shit, this nigga finally talked back. <laughs> I was like, yo. I was like, um, can I get this minute of your time? He was like, yeah, what's up? I was like, oh, shit, this nigga just talked. I was like, oh, what the fuck am I supposed to say? Yeah, right, like, right, right. I was like, yo, can I rap for you? And he was like, nah. I'm like, what? <laughs> like, the fuck you mean, no? He was like, listen, man. He was like. Build your name up, get hot, and you won't have to come here looking for me. I'm going to come looking for you. Ooh. And I was like, damn. And come on, uncle. This nigga right. proceeds to get his maid back. And I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> and he rolled the window down and said, yo, don't be mad. He was like, really do that. Mm -hmm. And the crazy shit is, is like a couple years ago, I went to Kanye's fashion show. And I was sitting across from him. And I said, yo. And then after the show, we was backstage. And him and Beyonce walked back there. And the nigga looked at me. Yo, what's up, man? I was like, I'm chilling. And he just patted me on the back like, you good? I was like, I'm good. And he don't remember, of course, but yeah. I'm just like, bro, I'm in the same room as this nigga yeah. right now with Beyonce. I was like, damn. That nigga wasn't something. lying. Yeah. I was like, just yeah. keep doing what you're doing. Yeah, because the universe but works like that. It does. Mm -hmm. And it's the key and the true testament mm -hmm. of just not stopping. Yeah. And it's like, you could pack this shit up. You know, they always say, man, like, yo, what if you was... In year nine, and you like you stop at year ten. I mean, you stop at year nine when year ten was it. Right. Mm -hmm. You know how I many people gave up probably on they break right at the peak. That's a yeah, fact. That's and it's like, fact. why stop? I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't know how people give up on what they love. And then it's just like you gonna watch the TV one day. Mad. Else was like, like, yeah, that was supposed, that was supposed to be, to be me, me, bro. Damn. Damn. If I just now you got three kids, can't invest the same. <laughs> exactly. Should get real yeah, out here. Change. I want to know something because you're 17, and like that really just blew my mind. Nah, why? Why? I feel like you. his like, age. <laughs> his age helped because we was talking earlier. Like the kids really make shit hot. So that's if you are high school, yeah. you that's why. That's yes. why it makes sense to what you were saying. Like yo, so I really ah. Uh, because I remember when niggas used to sing in high school. That one nigga that sung. It don't matter what the fuck you look like. What you did. As soon as niggas knew you sung, it they was lit boy, for you. you. It was was Big lit fun. for exactly. you, son. I want to know you at 17, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, what is it that your generation is looking for? Like, what is, you know what I'm saying? Like, what is it that y'all are looking for right now? Right now, it is looking for something to bop to. Mm. But that's not what I'm putting in my music. I'm putting, right. like, catchy feeling. You feel me? Mm -hmm. Bop mixed with some real shit. Like, you feel me? Mm -hmm. So yeah. at the same time, they listen, they like, oh, wait, hold on. Mm -hmm. As they dancing, they still listening. They like, oh, this is... Hold yeah, on. Yeah, you want to yeah. sound. He got the formula. 
Right. Facts. Because you slipping the real shit in there. Yeah. That's right. why you're going to win. Every hit record has a melody, a including fact. the realest niggas of all time. Like, DMX, how it's going down. Sing that hook. It's a melody. <laughs> then you go <laughs> That's my Nelly. Too. You go to Hove. Every hit has a melody. Mm-hmm. Ja Rule, Fab, Drake. Every hit has a melody. <laughs> Right. But if you Facts. slip some real shit in there, you build a cult following. Cause Facts. now it's like, oh, this nigga got something to say. Yeah. He got the formula. Like, right. Facts. Right. heard you, young buck. Right. But what y'all got w. coming up? Right. What y'all got coming up? with albums? With shows? Where y'all um, at with it? I got mixtapes coming up. Couple EPs. Shows definitely, definitely shows. But right now I got songs out everywhere. What's the one song you want people to go and look at? Right now, I just dropped this shit earlier today. It's called Star. All platforms. Okay. All right. platforms. Shit is fire. <laughs> just what I. <laughs> I'm a download just what it today. I said too earlier. Like mix with some bop and some real shit. That shit is like. <laughs> go tune in. He don't go got no word. Go tune in. Hey. <laughs> I'm gonna download it. Hey. hey. You said you got shows coming. Yo, you know what win? somebody said um today that was like that really stuck with me. Um shit, I forgot his name, but he was saying do a call to action. Like, don't tell niggas to, to stream your shit. Tell them to add it to their playlist. So mm. if you have a playlist on Spotify or Apple, whatever case may be, add that shit to your shit. So whatever music they talking about right now, add it to add your it. shit. That's and put key. it in rotation rotation. That's exactly. the real key, right? Facts. Facts. So what shows Facts. you say you had coming up? I got some shows coming up, like working on, you feel me? Mm-hmm. I'm talking, like my, this is my manager right here, you feel me? We working on some hey. shows, facts. Yeah, we're talking about shit about the managers. I'm, I'm like, hey, nigga said, pull up, pull up. I got my, like, I got my management. <laughs> <laughs> nah, you work, but he's right. 17, so you make a lot of sense. It make a lot of sense. Ain't nothing wrong with right. that right. if they got your best interests at heart. That's a plus. That's a plus. You got somebody on your team. Ah, yeah, yeah, That's a fact. And that mean y'all believe, and that's that's real to have at 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 that time right now. You got right. niggas that believe in you. They hear with you, so. Yeah. That's a and that's another thing, because there was a lot of gems that was dropped tonight. They were yeah. saying, like, who's the one approaching? Like, who who we hearing it from? Because a lot of people push artists and push songs, but, like, sometimes who it comes from matters, because he know me, so he reached out to me, and that's how he's even sitting here. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So that shit all work. It all play a part. Facts. You never know who, know what. And that's how I feel. If you have a manager, that means they have something that you're missing. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And it don't even got to be a connection in terms of, like, people. It could just be something that you're not thinking about that's a fact. that yeah, they could exactly. put you on to. So but people just got to know when, where, and why they mm-hmm. got a fucking manager, honestly. Facts, facts. But what y'all got coming up? That's a fact. Well, you know, right now I'm on the Bars in the Barbershop local New York yeah. tour. And um, for, for right now, um, I'm kind of, like, really just trying to study, like, a, a game plan and, and structure my business for 2020. Like, so I'm going to just, like, be making music at my own pace and, and figuring out the videos. And then I'm going to just drop everything 2020. Nice. Yeah. That's I fuck with the jacket, too. And um, can y'all going to say y'all down, grams? Can you break down bars, <laughs> and, uh, bars in the barbershop one more time? Oh, bars in the barbershop. That's a um. It started off like a, a competition, mm-hmm. and I I forgot how many shows he had, but it was like five artists, and we all basically, he's merging the culture. You know, if you like in the barber shops, niggas always chopping it up about mm-hmm. music and shit. Mm-hmm. So he's bringing the actual performances into the barber shop. So it's a competition. It'll be five artists. You know what I mean? I won the joint. That was like 2017, and now we here, and we going from like borough to borough, mm-hmm. and and just performing in different barber shops. And he's actually expanding it. He's having a show Atlanta. out in Atlanta, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So that shit is it's looking like it's looking real good. Yeah, that's dope. All right. Um, I'm just right now. I'm wrapping up my album, my new album that's gonna be coming out. Um, probably the top of July. I'm on a show. I'm I'm on a show hiatus till I finish that because I just did SOBs, Fact, which was, was a lit. very big show for me to headline that. Like, and the people who have like headlined that in the past is just to be on that that list of names is a beautiful feeling. Um, so after that show, right now I'm going to work on my just finish this album. Um, I did a tour at the top of the year, so. I expanded, tested the waters out of the city, which was very, very humbling experience and dope. 
and I did it like you said. And it's crazy because that's literally what I did. I put it together, a tour, and just hit the road. Yeah. And we sold Atlanta out, which was crazy. So nice. Um, yeah, it's just a beautiful feeling. But I'm just gonna finish this album. Um, I'm working my album out right now. I'm working the album that I have out, kicking it with my pops. It's on all streaming platforms. We like 600,000 streams in. So um, the new video is out, Clout. We just dropped it five days ago. We had like 35,000 views. So I just, you know, if you were listening to this, tune in. You know, we're trying to hit a milli. So we're going to work this. And then I debuted a single at my um, show at SOBs. And uh, it's everyone's asking for it. So we're going to do that this month and then we're going to just um drop the album um called spiritual levels we're going to drop that like probably the first week of july and then we just going to go crazy for the summer we got a crazy crazy record off there right now that's generating a lot of interest so nice. just go okay. mode but none of y'all said y'all ids or where they could find y'all yeah about to ask that. oh you could yeah. definitely find me the real dot jigger too i got two instagrams <laughs> <laughs> the real dot jigger five seven that's my official one right there Okay. Yeah. And what's the, I, I want to ask one more question before we wrap it up, too. What's something, because we all New Yorkers, and like we talked about before, Facts how be. like, they're trying to take hip hop out of New York and say, you know, the South is holding it down. What's something in one word that you could bring back, that you're going to bring back to New York as far as hip hop? Fun. Right. Mm. Um, Yeah, IG, and let us know what you could bring back. My IG, M A R underscore Q music. And that whole New York shit, that is, it's a rap for us. Um, <laughs> I, uh, What's the problem? I, it's a rap. I don't, I don't, I don't really care anymore. New York, to me, New York, been lost the sound. There's no more sound. We just dip ride in every other. So it's like, it's like I don't, I don't. He ain't lying. I don't, I don't really care no more. Like. Jeez. Like we we music like rap wise we don't have an identity we just we just Facts. hopping on every wave so I don't I don't really care about that anymore. <laughs> yeah that's it. Jeez. The cold hard truth. Go off. You got me hot under this wig <laughs> All right. Um, the gram all my social media platforms is Rich Peace in R I C H P S I N. Um, what I'm bringing back to the sound here is I think the number one problem is we either too caught up in the hook and the melody or we too caught up in being overly lyrical. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where everyone is crashed and there's no medium. And I think all the great artists right now that are like elite level artists have found a way to bring both full circle, which I believe and I will not believe, which I know I have. So, um... I'm here to bring the balance back. Mm. You know, I got bars. I know how to feed it to the people, and I also know how to write this, write the fuck out of a song. So, we're gonna mesh it back. We're gonna bring an uh, a Drake, Cole, Kendrick caliber artist out of New York. Should nice. I was very like that. If y'all don't fucking follow them, right. son, like, y'all are right dumb now, for real. Right. Then I jump everybody that's right. Be everybody right. ass. Right. We didn't even a have a regular that. show today. Right. Like, this shit was all interview because they just mad fucking fire. Like, right. okay. y'all niggas better follow them, mm-hmm. son. And, and make sure y'all take, email write us, y'all, y'all gems music. down because they Facts. dropped a lot of gems tonight. I'm sure everybody could walk away and yeah, know but e- email y'all music too to the station so we can put it in rotation on the station too. Yes, if y'all need that, I'll email box you a dm right now exactly so yeah. make sure you guys listen to these artists follow these artists guys we bring a hip-hop back to new york y'all <laughs> know how we do um we have june 8th uh first semester pop brand shop, launch brand launch from follow the culture guys make sure you pop out and you join that june 1st um Bowling for, for peace, peace charity Francis. basketball celebrity basketball event um it's gonna be a cool Dope oh, okay. lineup. You got little mama popping out. Uh, couple Lakers from Rikia, from the Lakers. Like it's gonna be a dope lineup, and it's definitely for the kids. You know, we will talk about community awareness. This is part of that, and you know, in a way to give back. So make sure you guys pop out to that, even if it's just to network, because networking yeah. is key. So make sure you guys come out to that June first. Um, At St. Francis, three o'clock. Saint, yes, exactly. In Pull Brooklyn. up downtown Brooklyn. And Sylvie got some events coming up as well. Um, I have a lot of shit going on Ooh. always. And I need motherfuckers to follow me because it don't make sense. Y'all niggas stalk my life and want to see what the fuck <laughs> my ass is doing and if my tongue is out. But don't understand that I'm 
I got more shit to offer. Fuck out of here, nigga. I'm a motherfucking boss, nigga. What you talking about? So follow my business page, A uh, Silver Lining Productions. You heard me? For me, like, I have a trap and main party that's going to be at a dink spot. It's going to be real piffy. It's going to be real dopey. You know what I'm saying? So we're going to have anime visuals in the background. We got Smash Bros. from Nintendo. We have mad giveaways. You feel me? So. <laughs> Yeah, pala, pala. Yeah, this nigga got skin. too much in common with me. Nah, y'all really cousins. Y'all, y'all looking like y'all hey, cousins. Hey, Fuck hey, out of here, Y'all not gonna tell me y'all not cousins. Y'all not gonna tell me y'all not cousins. It's like since Where's we, since, right now? since we here, it's like. It's just. It's, <laughs> yo. Yo, it's like. They long lost Yo, no funny shit. Facts. Y'all better hug before y'all leave. <laughs> no. Yo, no, no funny shit. Cousin, I heard his joint clout, and I'm, I don't know if I should have said anything, but I did a song over the same beat. That's crazy. And not only did I do a song over the same beat, the video is a little similar. Yes. Wow, Tia and so Tamara. I'm like, so I'm like, oh. then he telling me. He's telling me he on the vegan wave. That's he crazy. Tell, he telling, he's saying he took he took the break and Nigga, was take your head up, put it on his head. Let's he see if y'all. That's crazy. He said he I took the break. Let's see if we can talk. I, 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 I did that same shit. Too. Wow. So I'm like, what's what's really going on here? Like, that's crazy. we just found long nigga, lost nigga cousins. Nigga said we set him up. That's we, crazy. We, just, we said we went through accessory and found that they was related. But nah, so May 26 is 8 p.m. to 1 a.m. It's in Brooklyn. It's not too far from here. Y'all got to DM me for the spot. You feel me? Um, Also, June 9th, I have my art exhibition in Harlem. So y'all Harlem niggas better pop the fuck out (laughs) at Raw Space. Right there on Adam. Stop playing. I do it every year. you're definitely not from Harlem. You're saying Adam. Adam Adam Adam. playing pal. What's that, 7 5 Yeah. All right, we <laughs> all and we go by avenues. Y'all, y'all niggas, y'all, y'all, y'all. Adam Clay and Powell Boulevard. That's what it's literally on. It's twenty thirty one Adam Clay and Powell Boulevard. I think I'm not eight. from Harlem. I'm from Brooklyn. Okay, let's make that very clear. I am not. A lot of people think I'm from Harlem, but I'm not. But my art exhibition is in Harlem, June 9th. That's a five. Yes, it's three p.m. So whatever the fuck it is, put Adam Clay and Powell so y'all niggas don't get lost. Don't listen to them because we not all from. Harlem. Maybe that's seven five. I'll be forgetting. See, how you gonna tell me? But anyways, seven. make sure you follow us. I'm King Sylvie, K I N G S L V Y on the gram and the Silver Line of Production. So you can follow all of my other shit that I have going on. Yes, and make sure you guys follow Lethalist Podcast. You're not trolling shit. <laughs> what? <laughs> so without trolling, y'all. Anyway, <laughs> make sure you continue <laughs> to follow us at Lethal <clears throat> underscore Lips with a Z underscore podcast. Not to be confused with the porn star. Stop sending this weird shit. Um, and unless me. it's a valid ass dick picture, that's, that's what I'm saying. Crazy. Like for it all has that, to be please. valid. I mean, we'll take yeah. ass, we'll take boobs. You know what I'm saying? Like, we'll take valid like, ass. Stop nudes. tagging me in female. Yeah, like, like don't like, tag us in some corny shit. Like at least, at least, at least. Be the best you like, could be. Exactly, because if you're trying to audition, a nigga really audition. What are you talking right, about? Right, because we would have hired you, oh, goddamn. Yeah. We would have <laughs> hired you. <laughs> yeah. Nah, but <laughs> see, see, I could tell y'all was the type that was gonna be like, "Yo, y'all eat butt." Like, wow, yeah. we didn't ask him we no, no, we did not booty ask no questions. booty questions. Y'all heard it? Wow. Nah, my right now, right now, do you eat? <laughs> nah, he wanna tell us so <laughs> bad. <laughs> Yo, that's <laughs> he got up. <laughs> <laughs> he, wait, he got a he got a piece of booty meat in the back of his grill like That's crazy. <laughs> I want to share this. He wanted to tell us so I bad like I, I, I want smell. to share this with somebody. <laughs> so y'all make sure y'all follow me, Urban underscore classic with a Q. We out. <laughs> Yo. Strips. We know that we got strength and